Hi, my name is Ken. And my name is Jason. And today we're looking at innovation. So Innovation was published in 2010 by Asmati Games, and it was designed by Carl Chudik. In this game, players take the role of civilizations, but you actually only are dealing with the civilization's uh, technologies, the ones they create throughout time. Yeah, and it actually uses a fairly innovative card mechanic. Oh, oh, oh this guy right here. So first of all, let's go over the components for Innovation. These are the player cards. There's one for each player, and they're actually double-sided with the reference sheet on the back. These are the special achievement cards. And these are the technology cards, and uh, there are ten different card backs, each one corresponding to a different age. And that's pretty much it, so on to setup. So to set up innovation, first you start by shuffling all the cards. No, no, Ken, no. No? No, that's, that's not how this works. No. Seriously, don't 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 do okay. that. Okay, okay, I'm I'm just I'm just screwing around with you. I already know. So to actually start up innovation, make sure that all the cards are separated out by their particular ages. Once all the cards are separated by ages, you are going to arrange them in a clock-like fashion in the center of the table, like such. Have the special achievement cards readily accessible by all players nearby, and then you must generate the age achievements. So one card is taken from every single age and placed in the center of the board. Make sure they are placed in such a way that the uh, larger number rather than the smaller number and the name of the age is showing. The cards that are placed this way are going to be taken in as achievements and they will actually never be used by the players. So this means that one random card from every age is actually going to be eliminated from the game right from the start. The exception is number 10. There is no uh, achievement for the information age. Give a reference card to all players. Return the remaining player boards to the box. Finally, after everything else is set up, each player receives two cards from the prehistoric age. And now you are ready to play. All right, and now I'm gonna go over the gameplay for uh, innovation. So during each player's turn, that player may take two actions from the following list. They may either draw, meld, achieve, or enact a dogma action. It should also be noted that the first player, or the first two in a four-player game, only gets one action on the first turn. So first of all, when melding, you select a card from your hand, and you play it in front of you. Nice and easy. Now there are five colors of cards in the game, and if you already have a card of that color, it is actually played on top of the stack of cards of that color that you already have. And this continues any splay that you may already have, and more on that later. If you choose to draw a card, you draw the top card from one of the ten decks, and it's the one matching the highest value card you currently have in play. And that only counts the top cards on your stacks. If it happens that the deck that you're supposed to draw from is exhausted, then you draw from the next highest value deck that still has cards. The achieve action is very important because that's essentially how you win the game. So throughout the game you'll actually have the opportunity to score a card uh, and whenever a card is scored it's just tucked underneath your player card uh, under the section that says score and that means that its value will actually be showing and that is how many points it's worth essentially so Age 1 cards are worth 1 point, age 2 cards are worth 2 points, etc. So when you choose to achieve, you may select an achievement from the center of the table and tuck it under your achievement side of your player card as long as you meet two requirements. You have to have a card of at least that value on your board. So if the highest card on your board is currently a 4, then you can only get achievements 1, 2, 3, or 4 if they're still available. In addition, you have to have a number of points in your score pile equal to 5 times the value of the achievement you're trying to get. 
And these are conveniently just marked on the sides of the achievements, so you can see, tell at a glance how many points you need to get to score them. And once an achievement is gone, it is not possible for another player to get that achievement. And the final action is the dogma action, and this is really the core mechanic of the game. So, to take a dogma action, you select a card that you have in play. It must be one of the ones that are on top of that colored stack. And you essentially go through every action listed there and you execute them in order. Now, I'm going to go a lot more in depth here because, like I said, this is kind of the core of the game and uh, this is where a lot of the rules are. So, there are two types of dogma effects, shared and I demand. I demand effects are always preceded by I demand in bold. So you should be able to pick them out pretty readily. When you're doing an I demand dogma, each player looks at the icon shown next to the uh, action on the card, and they count how many of that icon appears on their cards. So the icons, there are six different icons. They come up at various rates in different ages. Um, and in this particular instance, I have a card with three leaves on it. So I would have three leaves if, they're, if I were executing a leaf action. So again, with I demand dogmas, players with less of that icon than you must fulfill the action requirements going clockwise from you. Anybody who has as many or more are safe. Now for shared effects, it works kind of similarly, but it's kind of uh, inverted. So again, everyone counts the number of matching icons. And then starting with the player on your left, if they have as many or more of that icon than you, they get to execute that action. So in the end, you're going to execute the action last. And this is usually desirable because a lot of these involve, you know, drawing cards, and so if everyone else draws a card, maybe that deck will be exhausted and you get to draw a higher card. In addition, if any other player shared the action, then you may also take a free draw action when it comes back to you. So a few minor points on this. First of all, all dogma actions are mandatory unless it starts with you may. So even if somebody doesn't necessarily want to share one of your dogma actions, they have to, if they have as many icons or more than you of that type, and it does not start with you may. In addition, an opponent only counts as sharing an action if a game change actually occurs. So for example, if an action says to discard a card from your hand and your opponent has no cards in their hand, they haven't discarded anything, nothing has changed, so they don't count as having shared that action. So next up I want to talk about splaying, and this is the really neat mechanic with this game. This is what really drew me to it. So there are several cards throughout the game that will instruct you to splay your cards in a certain direction. So when you're instructed to splay cards, you actually basically push all the cards in the stack to that sort of that direction uh, so that they are slightly overlapping. So you could be instructed to splay them to the left or to the right or up. So you might be asking, why would I want to do this? Well, uh, all of the icons that are actually exposed by splaying it are actually counted as being on your board now. So instead of just getting the three icons here on the top, you're also getting these additional six icons. Now each card also has a unique icon that just sort of displays that card itself. Uh, that doesn't count for anything, but still, um, it's always a good idea to uh, display because you know, you'll know you usually get at least get a few icons there. It should also be noted here that splaying to the left will always give you one additional icon per card below it. Splaying to the right will give you two, and splaying up will give you three per card. So that's kind of the progression you're going to get as you go through the game, uh, because obviously up is the most desirable and left is the least desirable. There are also a few other phrases that might appear on cards that I just want to very briefly go over. This is not an exhaustive list. There are a few others that might show up. Uh, throughout your games. Those are all on the reference card for the most part, uh, but you know, I just wanted to go over some of the basic ones just so you kind of understand how most of this works. So first of all, when any card talks about a card's value, its value is its age. 
So that is the big number on the back, or it's the number in the upper right hand corner if it's actually being played face up. And that is what is being referred to when a card is talking about the highest or lowest card. When you are instructed to tuck a card, you take that card and you place it at the bottom of its corresponding stack. And when told to draw and X, you must do X with the card drawn. So if it says to draw and meld, you must draw a card and you must meld that card. You can't meld another card from your hand. When told to return a card, you take that card and you place it at the bottom of its age pile, face down. And like I said, there are a few other phrases that might be used, but you know, they're, they're all on the reference card. You can probably look them up pretty easily, so I'm not going to go over all of those here. Now we're going to go over the special achievements. So that's these five cards over here. Uh, they're usually placed so that you know anybody can look at them and see them quite easily. These are achievements that any player may gain at any time. Now, there are two ways to gain each of these. First of all, there will actually be text on the achievement that tells you specifically how you can achieve it. So, for example, the World Special Achievement says, Claim this special achievement immediately if you have 12 or more clocks on your board. So, as soon as you achieve that, you get that immediately. You don't have to take an action for these. In addition, each card uh, in the Special Achievement section will have an icon in its lower left corner. This shows a corresponding technology and it will actually list what technology it is and what age it's from. That technology will have a special way that you can claim this card if it's still available. And that will actually be listed on the technology card so it doesn't really go into detail here. And again, once a special achievement is claimed, it is no longer available for any other player. So now, as far as ending the game, there are three ways that the game can end. So the game ends immediately when any player has claimed a number of achievements based on the number of players, and it's essentially eight minus the number of players, so in a two-player game it's six. In addition, if a player attempts to draw a card of value 11 or higher, the game ends immediately and the player with the highest score wins. So in that particular circumstance, it goes by score instead of achievements. So you should probably keep that in mind too if, uh, you know, the stacks are starting to run out. And finally, some higher level cards, pretty much just the tens I believe, uh, will actually allow a player to win outright. Sir, all of their cities seem to have been blasted back to the Stone Ages. Uh, also, you have a call on line one. Oh, let me get that. Hello? Hey, it's me, the president of Jasonia. I, uh, I'm the one who just blew up all of your technology. So, uh, how are things? You monster! Our people will tell stories of your- Complete and utter victory? Your atrocities! Yeah, well, at least I still have indoor plumbing. Enjoy your latrines! <laughs> Sir, I have grave news! Can't it wait? Can't you see that I'm taunting the president of Kenchaka? But it appears that our scientists have accidentally invented Skynet. Invented what? <laughs> I'm the last one left. I win! Also, sir, our latrines appear to be backed up. I hate this civilization. So if a card says that a single player wins if X, and uh, a single player has X, that player wins. If no player has X, or more than one player has X, then it's entirely ignored. So it does have to be a single player. And that's pretty much it. Let's get down to this. All right, so now we're going to play uh, probably a couple of example turns. We'll see how many we get to. Um, the first thing that happens at the very start of the game, uh, you have your two cards in your hand. So uh, first of all, we both secretly choose one of these two cards from our hand. Uh, we reveal them simultaneously. And the person who chose the card with a title closest to the beginning of the alphabet actually goes first. And in addition, this card is melded, so, so it's the first card on your uh, board. All right, so I have chosen domestication and I've chosen Ken's... Co code of laws. All right, well, I guess Ken's going first. 
So because I'm the first player, I only get one action to start off with. However, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to use the dogma effect of Code of Laws. Uh, so that's going to be my action. So because it is a dogma effect, um, and it is not a I demand, that means it could be potentially shared between all players. Code of Laws has the, uh, the crowns, or the coins icon, um, as its dogma effect. So Jason, do you have enough uh, crowns to beat my two? I only have one, so I do not. All right, so Jason does not share this effect with me. Now, you may tuck a card from your hand of the same color as any other card on your board. I currently only have purple. If you do, you may splay that color of your cards left. Currently, I actually only have a purple card in my hand, so I am going to tuck that card underneath Code of Laws. And because of the effect, I actually get to splay left. Well done. Thank you. Uh, so that's my turn. Uh, Jason, go ahead. All right, so because I am not the first player, I get my standard two actions. So um, first of all, I think that I am actually going to do the dogma effect for my card, Domestication. So this is a tower card, so how many towers do you have, Ken? I only have one. All right, I have two, so Ken does not get to share in this. So the text reads, meld the lowest card in your hand. So I'm going to do that, and I get tools. And in addition, draw a one. So I get to draw a one card into my hand. And uh, I think for my second action, I am actually going to do domestication again. Uh, so I'm going to meld the lowest card in my hand, which is the one I've just drawn. So I meld the wheel, and again I get to draw one. So that's both of my actions, so now it's back to Ken. So we're a few more turns in. Um, as you can see, well first of all, Kenny's moved over here so that you can actually see all of his cards. Uh, both of us have a little bit of splaying going on. Uh, in, in addition... <laughs> In addition, we also each have a couple of achievements, so Kenny has grabbed up two and three. I've grabbed up one, and I also achieved the uh, Empire Special Achievement. So we're kind of on even footing there. Um, and it's currently my turn, so I get my two actions. Um, first of all, I am going to choose to achieve. So I have 23 points in my score pile, and I have cards up to the fifth age on my board. So that means I can claim Achievement 4. And for my second action, I think I am going to use the ability of Coal. So first of all, this is an industrial icon, uh, well, factory icon, I guess, uh, ability. I have seven of these icons. I have four. All right, so I'm the only one who gets to do this. So first of all, it says draw and tuck a five. So I draw a five and I tuck it. Now, that actually means that this is the top card because I don't actually have any of that card yet, so yay, I finally have purple cards. <laughs> uh, next, you may splay your red cards right. They already are because I've already taken this action previously. And then you may score any one of your top cards. If you do, also score the card beneath it. Uh, in this case, I don't really think that I want to do that, and it does say you may. So I can actually opt not to. So I'm not going to do that part of it. So uh, that's it for my turn. Uh, on to Ken. All right, so on my turn, I'm going to use the dogma effect of medicine. Uh, so this is going to be using the leaf uh, symbol. I currently have uh, four leaves. Jason? I have one. All right, so I demand you exchange the highest card in your score pile with the lowest card in mine. All right, so well. Here's a one. And I have a five. So Enjoy your five, or your one, rather. Alright, and I'm going to use the dogma effect of philosophy. Uh, now this is, requires the, uh, the light bulbs, uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jason? I have three. Alright, so uh, I'm going to use uh, philosophies then. So yeah, you may splay left any one color of your cards, and I'm going to splay my blue cards left, because I have not done that yet. And I may score a card from my hand. I'm going to score this errant six that's hanging out in my hand here. Which means if I'm lucky enough, I may actually be able to get the five achievement and catch up to Jason. Fairly soon. Now that's my two actions though, so now it's Jason's turn. So, that's innovation. Um, Jason, what do you have to say? I really like this game. 
Uh, it's probably one of my favorite newer games. Uh, I, I like it for the fact that it's you know pretty compact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a pretty low price point considering it's an, kind of an indie game. Uh, so you know it sits around the thirty dollar mark. Uh, and I mean the thing for me is the the card mechanic in it, the whole you know splaying uh, thing. I, I just really think that's really clever. And, uh, you know, I, I really like interesting mechanics like, like that, for sure. The first time you showed me this game, actually, I was really, really impressed. Um, first off, the thing that um, the thing that really interested me about it was the fact that it's, it's kind of like the whole tech tree thing from Civilization and other similar type games, but without the other part of the game. And let's face it, I mean, the tech tree stuff is usually the fun stuff. <laughs> like, that's usually the most fun of those, uh, those types of games. So it's like tech tree, the card game. Um, but so much more than that. The splaying mechanic, my god, that is such a great mechanic. It's simple, and it's very clever, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, very powerful. And it's, they have a lot of different ways it's used, like left, right, and up. Um, again, simple but powerful. Uh, another thing that really, uh, um, really interests me about this game, the first time Jason showed me this, is when he set up the board, uh, or the, the play area, rather. And, and uh, the whole, uh, like, ages that go from 1 to one to 10, and it's arranged in that, like, clockwise fashion, I was like, my god, that is so cool. It's, I can't even really begin to describe how awesome this game is. Well, well it's, it's kind of, a, you know, it's a very elegant design. The, yeah. the actual setup looks pretty elegant. It, it's, you know, a, it's a really solid game, and, and uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that they managed to do this with just cards. Yeah. I mean that that's kind of hard to do, but you know it's it's a really really neat game, and uh, you know they they've done it sort of in a minimalistic way, uh, which is pretty difficult to do overall. But they, they you know they've managed. So I I, I think I, I really can't say enough good things about this game. I really can't. One thing that kind of turned me off from it uh, when I was first seeing it, and this was a nitpick at best, was just the fact that the uh, the cards themselves just have the colored background and that's it. Like, there's not really any art or anything like that. But that's, I think, less of a, uh, of a problem with the game and more of just my perception as a board gaming enthusiast and such that, like, I see all these games with art and stuff, and you suddenly see one that doesn't. It's like, oh, no, this game doesn't have art. Clearly, <laughs> effort was not put into this. That is a wrong assumption, and if you make that, you have missed out on a fantastic game. All right, Jason, what do you think you'd give Innovation? I'm giving this a 5 out of 5. Ooh, 5 out of 5. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is a solid game. It's one of the few games that I, you know, I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's really, really clever. So, you know, i I got to give props there. I, uh, I was kind of mulling on uh, back and forth on this before the... The, the actual uh, ratings part here, and I think I also have to give it a 5 out of 5. Wow. Well. I honestly can't think of anything that I would do with this game that could make it better. I feel that this game is perfect the way it is. Um, honestly, I can't even think of any expansions I would put out to this game. It's but basically complete. There is an expansion, though. There is. Do yeah. you tell? Uh, well, I, I actually don't know much about it. Oh, fair enough. I, it's, I know it's called Echoes from the Past, and it, it, I guess it didn't actually has a few new mechanics in there, so, you know, uh, that's another thing to think about. They are continuing on with this game, too. Well, you know what? And in this case here, rather than including, uh, putting out an expansion that would actually fix things or make things just better, um, this is clearly an example where they're putting out an expansion to simply expand. Yeah. Uh, they're, if they're going to expand the mechanics, I welcome it. I think that this is actually going to be probably a good move for them. And I feel it'll probably make another solid game. Like, I'm actually really looking forward to that expansion. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to give us a grand total of 10 meeples. I believe this is our second 10 meeple game? Second or third? Third 10 meeple game. It was yeah. uh, Dominion, uh, Rhino Rampage, and... Uh, oh, wait, was Rhino Rampage 10? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. Well, it, it was definitely pretty up there, but uh, this is clearly... We, we try to reserve the 10 meeple uh, standing for some very high-class games, and... Like I said, I can't think of any reason to give it anything lower than that, so 10 out of 10. All right, so that's all for today. Uh, join us next time for Mansions of Madness. Ooh. See you next time, and have good games.